Keyword placement is still important in SEO and how to use keywords on your website. And in this video, you will learn exactly where and how to add keywords in your blog post or web pages. So let's get started. The first keyword placement where you should add your primary keywords is in the title tag. The title tag is the blue headline that you can see on search engine result pages or SERPs. And John Miller confirmed that this is a tiny factor used by Google when assessing pages for ranking. Title tags are super important on page SEO factor because they are the first thing people see before they visit your website and they have a big impact on your CTR. Therefore, it's important to create the most relevant and clickable title tag for your web pages as the more clicks you get, the higher ranking you will receive. So with that, here are some of the best title text tips. Include the primary keywords toward the beginning. Keep it short and concise. I would say up to nine words. Make it super relevant to the SERPs and your page. Avoid duplicated title text. Include relevant keyword modifiers. And lastly, run an A-B test for your titles. It's important to know that Google did announce that they might change your title tag if they think they can produce a better and more relevant title for your page. With that, to add the title tag to your website using WordPress, install an SEO plugin such as RankMath and easily edit the title tag under the plugin settings. If left unchanged, the plugin will use the page title as the title tag. The next keyword placement where you should put your primary and secondary keywords and LSI keywords is in your meta description. A meta description is a short description of a page under the title tag that provides a brief description of your page, often related to the user query and it's another important part of your on-page SEO. They further help Google and users understand what's your page about. Thus, they can increase your page click-through rate and John Miller confirmed that meta description can influence the search rankings for your page. Additionally, Google may sometimes use a different snippet of the content on your page instead of the meta description you have provided, especially if Google thinks that the snippet from the content is more relevant to the user's query. With that, here are some of the meta description best practices. Include your primary keywords and one or two most important secondary or LSI keywords. Keep it concise between 150 or 160 characters. Create a unique description for each page on your site. Include relevant information about the content in the description. Use quality descriptions that focus on the USB of the page. And lastly, avoid using a title tag in meta description. Make it unique. With that, to add a meta description to your website. Using WordPress, you can use an SEO plugin such as RankMath again and easily edit the meta description under the plugin settings. And before we jump to the next keyboard placement, please like this video because it helps me to produce better quality content and spread it around the YouTube. So please help me out. The next important keyword placement is your header tags or H1, H2, H3 and etc or headlines within your content. SEO-friendly headlines are important for both users and search engines. For search engines, header tags are used to better understand what's the page about and they are considered one of the Google ranking factors. According to John Miller, headings on the page help us to better understand the content on the page. Headings on the page are not the only ranking factor that we have, we look at the content on its own as well. But sometimes having a clear heading on a page gives us a little bit more information on what the section is about. Whereas for users, using headlines helps user experience as you can chunk the content into digestible information and it helps users to browse through the content quickly to find what they are looking for. With that, here are some of the best practices for SEO-friendly headlines. Use only one H1 tag and include your primary keyword within. If possible, try to include your primary keyword in H2 or H3 headings, but only if possible. Include relevant LSI keywords and secondary keywords in your subheadings and headings. For every headline, try to have a maximum of 400 words. Use headlines to capture feature snippets and answer questions. And lastly, keep headlines short and sweet. I would recommend between 50 to 60 characters or between 7 to 9 words. If you want to learn more how to produce SEO friendly headlines, you can watch my video right here. The fourth keyword placement is in the introduction of your blog post or even in your products services or category pages. The introduction is the first section of the content that the reader will see and it sets the stage for the rest of the piece. Including the primary keyword in the introduction helps to establish the topic and focus of the content 
and it also helps search engines understand the content's relevance to the keyword. I also recommend including the most relevant LSI or secondary keywords within your introduction to improve your ranking for these keywords as well. For example, if you look at any of my articles, such as the article on B2B blogging, which is my target keyword, you can see that I have included the keyword within the introduction. The next keyword placement is in your content body. You should include your target keyword throughout the content to further help search engines and users better understand what's your page about. However, you should definitely avoid hitting certain keyword density percentage for search engines as John Miller said that keyword density is not a ranking factor. Your goal is to naturally mention your primary keywords as well as other secondary keywords throughout the content without forcing it. So make sure you mention your keywords throughout the content, but always in a natural way. For example, most of my articles have only 0.1 to 0.2 keyword density, but a few articles also with keyword density higher than 3%. This is because sometimes articles will have naturally more mentions of your target keywords, and if that's the case, you shouldn't worry about it. And that same applies to articles where including your target keyword is difficult and you can only mention it a couple of times. The next important keyword placement factor is in your images specifically in your image alt text and names. It's important to know that while Google and other search engines are getting better at recognizing images, especially the more obvious ones like dogs, apples, chairs, and etc., essentially search engines do not have the capability to understand the content of an image the same way that humans do. Instead, they rely on the other information to understand the context of an image, such as the file name, the text surrounding the image, and the metadata associated with the image. Therefore, to help search engines, it's important to write descriptive image names and alt text and include your primary and secondary keywords within your image names and alt text. And to do that, you must focus on two types of images. The first one is feature picture. Always include your primary keyword within the feature picture, and you can also add any close variants or important secondary keywords. For example, the feature picture of my article on blog SEO includes the primary keyword as well as the secondary keyword blogging SEO tips. And the second type are content images. In some, around 20 to 30% of your images, you want to include the primary keyword again. But in most cases, you will want to include other relevant secondary and LSI keyword within your images. For example, in the article on blog SEO, I repeated the keyword in another image. And by the way, I usually keep the image name and alt text the same, just copy paste it. However, if I reuse my images from another article and the name of the picture does not fit, then I just change the alt text and keep the image name to make it more relevant. Or sometimes I just copy the image and change the name for another of my articles. So you can find duplicated images within different names on my website. The next important keyword placement is in your URL. As said by Google, keywords in URL are very small ranking factors after it is indexed and it's not worth restructuring your website, but it's good to make it right in the first place. And when Google crawls a new web page for the first time, it will use the keywords in the URL to get an idea of what the site is about. With that being said, to make SEO friendly URLs, I recommend only including your primary keyword and nothing else there. For example, my article on profitable keywords has only the keyword in it. And you definitely want to avoid the common SEO mistake, such as copying the title into the URL or adding irrelevant numbers, years, or keyword modifiers in your URL, which makes it hard to update your content and not evergreen. For example, this page made all the mistakes at once. They added the number of the strategies, irrelevant words in it, and the year as well. Now, what if they want to update the article? They would have to delete this article, redirect it, and basically redo it and lose all the rankings the page got. And the last keyword placement that is super important and you should always optimize for is in your internal links. Internal links are essential for your website scrolling, ranking, indexing, and overall SEO success, as Google is using them in numerous ways. And even John Miller said, I think it's one of the biggest things that you can do on a website to kind of guide Google and guide visitors to the pages that you think are important. Additionally, John Miller also stated that internet linking is an opportunity to communicate Google something more than what internet navigation links 
can communicate. Therefore, using internal links, anchor tags to put your primary keywords is a great way to tell search engines what is your page about and what keywords you want to rank for. For example, to find internal linking opportunities for my article about SEO audit, I used this Google operator, which showed me all the keyword mentions within my website. And then I just added the internal links to these articles. However, you should not only add primary keywords to your anchor tags, but also use any close variants, synonyms, or explanatory internal links anchor tags, such as this example of an internal link for my article about getting email subscribers. And that's all from me. Now, before you start with keyword placement, you must ensure that you are targeting the right main primary keyword. And to learn that, you should watch this video. Also, please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel because it helps me to produce better quality content for you. Ciao!